Welcome to this uh, new uh, Pfizer chat of the Zero Project Conference 2022. And we're going again uh, to the heart of the Zero Project uh, approach and Zero Project mission, uh, which is scaling, scaling innovations, scaling social businesses, how to do it, what it takes, uh, because Zero Project is about scaling. So what we do is uh, we want to identify uh, innovative solutions uh, and we want to get them connected to uh, other members of the Zero Project network who find this interesting, who find this uh, uh, appealing and who find methods to take this international, to take this abroad. And uh, here with me today is uh, uh, an, an old uh, colleague and friend uh, from the academic world, from the uh, uh, Vienna uh, Uni University of Economics, Peter Wandor, uh, and he has a long-term experience also in, in exploring, researching how this uh, going international for social enterprise works. So, uh, Peter, uh, I suggest you uh, introduce yourselves properly for the beginning. For the beginning. Yeah, thank you, Michael. Uh, thank you for the introduction and uh, also for inviting me to the Zero Conference, um, both physically and, and virtually. Um, so, as you mentioned, I'm, I'm based here in Vienna at the University of Economics and Business, which you also see in the picture behind me. And um, what I'm doing here is um, I'm uh, head of and co-founded the Social Entrepreneurship Center. So we look at uh, social entrepreneurship, social innovation, and also the ecosystems that these new actors require and try to figure out how they work um, and also support social entrepreneurs um, and social innovators. So it's a mix of capacity building and research that, that we are interested in. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's somehow level the playing field, what we're talking about in these next minutes. Uh, so um, my understanding is uh, it's hard for social entrepreneurs to go uh, abroad, to go international. It's even harder for startups who have access to a lot of seed money and uh, Silicon Valley money or whatever it, is, it, 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 it takes or what's called for these uh, unicorns and these other great innovations, uh, no doubt they are great, but in, in this world of social entrepreneurship where you have a, a social or another English and ecological, ecological mission, it, it's different. You don't have so many resources. You're not in the heart of the of, 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 of big money. Uh, so, but how would you describe the, the challenges that, uh, that social enterprises and social entrepreneurs face when they want to scale and want to go abroad? Yeah. So I think, I think that's, a, that's a big question, and it's also a paradox that is at the heart of this topic, which is that on one hand, we know that scaling is uh, crucial to solve, or at least try to solve the big social and environmental issues of, of our world. There is this uh, famous quote by, I think it's attributed to Bill Clinton, that every problem has a solution somewhere, and the big challenge is to actually scale those solutions that work. So we have a lot of uh, potential that lies within scaling, some say even more potential than innovation. And at the same time, very few social ventures actually are successful in scaling what they're doing locally, and even fewer of them are scaling internationally. So we know from work that we are doing within the Impact Hub network, which is a network of over 100 different uh, hubs across the world of social entrepreneurs and innovators, that it's only single digit percent of uh, entrepreneurs that actually uh, are able to and, and undertake uh, scaling efforts. So the big question uh, we ask ourselves is why, why is that the case, especially when we know that many of these entrepreneurs are basically interested in scaling. Mm. Um, and there are some, some answers. Yeah, please. Uh, Peter, before we go into more details, uh, I think what also should be, uh, could be interesting for our viewers is how you categorize these types of scaling. Uh, you could, from my understanding, you could start with open source, just putting everything online and whoever needs it takes it. On the other hand, you can grow your own company, try to find uh, uh, money that f helps you fund your expansion. So there's a, and you can go, go to try to change systems and change the regulations. Uh, there are very different uh, ways of doing it. What, what's your, what's your, what, what, what's your main category that, that you are based, uh, that you're basing your research on? But the, the basic question of, of scaling is how to get uh, whatever you're doing to more people, right? Mm. And as you indicated, um, in the social field, there are many uh, ways to do that, maybe even more so than, than you would traditionally associate with, with the commercial field. So you can, on one hand, you can be very offhand and basically just share information. So some organizations do that. They uh, work open source, 
they share whatever they do um, with uh, the community, with whoever is interested in taking it up, and they support scaling in a very hands-off, non-controlling way. On the other hand of the spectrum, you have organizations that uh, scale by doing it sort of the old-fashioned way, by branching, so by starting their own organizations in a different location or a different country. But you have many more ways to do it. You can also try to influence policymaking, uh, public opinion, and there is an increasing number of organizations that do things like scaling or license, uh, franchising or licensing, um, which are a mix of, of opening up and flexibility, but at the same time keeping some level of control to make sure that the quality of the services is still as high as you want them to be. Mm. Okay, uh, Peter, let's now move to, the, to your current research. I think you published a, 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 a new piece of research recently, which also gives us some insights in what works and what does not work or not work so well. So maybe you give us some insights on your, on your study, what you did and some of your core findings. So the study that we did last year, um, together with my uh, colleague Magdalena Lena and, uh, sorry, Magdalena Winkler and Martin Merwald um, was trying to figure out actually why there is this, this gap uh, between intention and action. So why so few organizations actually manage to scale and in the program, we, we looked at the capacities that they need to scale. So the big question was, if you design a training, what should be taught in this training? So we uh, looked at uh, eight specific cases, case studies of organizations that scale, as well as several hundred uh, organizations that reported their support needs and uh, tried to come up with, uh, say, the, the silver bullet, the, the one skill that you need to be a successful scaler when you go international. And, uh, and yeah, any any core findings? Uh, what uh, why why this uh, gap is there, and what can be best done to bridge it? So so the bad news is we didn't find the one single bullet in terms of the one skill that you need, mm. but rather we, we found something that is more a curriculum. So we had uh, 19 different uh, skills coming from uh, organi basically analytic competencies over to uh, organizational competencies to, to finding partners, managing relationships that really um, mirror the challenges of this, uh, um, of this undertaking. So if you want to scale a, an organization, uh, it is uh, almost as complex as starting the organization anew. Maybe even more complex, because in the beginning, you need to understand uh, what makes your organization successful in the first place. If you don't understand why your organization is successful, um, you will probably end up with a scaling strategy that scales the wrong thing. So, for example, you might think that your organization is very effective because you have very good processes or you have a great uh, product, but it may be uh, because you have a leadership team that is very unique. And that is good for the leadership team, but usually people don't scale as well as processes and, and tacit uh, codified knowledge. So it, it's important to understand what you're scaling before you actually scale. And you have similar types of challenges across the whole um, process of scaling from one place another and then to another. Mm. Well, let, let's pick at one of these, uh, these indicators that you mentioned, the one on, let's say, is it the leadership or is it some unique approach? How do I find this out if I put myself yeah, I'm in, in the ESLA Foundation or Zero Project uh, shoes and you ask me the question, why are you successful? I have an answer for that. But uh, how do I know if that's the right answer? How, what, what do I do? <laughs> well, I, th I think it's a good question. I mean, um, one way, and, and that's, that would be a general suggestion when someone uh, tries, to, tries to scale, uh, is first invest some time in analysis, maybe also talk to other people. Usually uh, what we know from uh, all sorts of research on biases, people, uh, um, so, so biases tend to be less emergent uh, for other people than uh, people have biases about themselves. And the same is true about organizations. So if you talk uh, with organizational developers or with peers, they might be able to already uh, provide you some feedback on your hypothesis on, on what makes you successful or not. But really the takeaway from research is uh, to then also try it out. Uh, but trying out um, probably as you would do in a lean startup approach can also mean trying out small. So before building that uh, big uh, social franchise system that goes into 20 countries, maybe you try to scale uh, to the neighboring town or within your, the same city to another location, mm -hmm. whatever makes sense in your industry. So small steps, I think, also apply here mm -hmm. to validate whether your approaches make any sense or not. Mm -hmm. um, I got a question, another one regarding to technology. No? Technology is 
definitely one of the biggest drivers of change and also of, of social entrepreneurs and uh, uh, new IT solutions that develop some apps, uh, some database, uh, some whatever artificial intelligence solutions. Would you see it makes a major difference if, it, if this is technology driven, uh, this social enterprise, or if it's not? Uh, because from uh, I'm, I have a reason to ask this, from my understanding from the zero project, it's a major difference uh, because technology normally can be e easily scaled across countries because sometimes you, you even need it to have it in an app store and then you can already share it. No? Uh, whereas with a social innovation, it's much more difficult. We have to always find partners, uh, training a lot, uh, changing mindsets of people and so on. No? You would see that way, or you would you would tend to absolutely, differ. absolutely. Yeah. I think one of the the main reasons why scaling has been talked about so much in the commercial field, the commercial field, and not so much in the social field yet, is because, on average, uh, the the social and environmental sectors tend to be more service focused, and more of these services are human to human services, and that's very tough to scale. If you have uh, a human to human interaction, figuring out what works and scaling that requires. A lot of sticky knowledge to be un unsticked and, and codified. Now, on the other hand, if you have tech, if you have something that maybe is a digital technology, their scaling is much easier because uh, yeah, you basically, in some cases, you just need a server and the infrastructure, and that is uh, already allowing you to, to scale with marginal costs of basically zero, which is very different from building a school to have a train the trainers approach and then scaling step by step. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> let's move now. We are Coming in this last four, uh, three to four minutes, uh, let's now more more move to the to the to the human side of it, uh, Peter. From your research or maybe also from your experience, uh, would you s how would you uh, analyze a, a personality? Not everyone is a social entrepreneur uh, who can take something global. No? Some people might be better off to stick what they have because it's good, it works, uh, but it, they may be overstretched when they try to go international. Would you have some? some, some uh, suggestion or some hint or some idea how people might be better in making the right decision if and how to scale from their personality? I think that's a super important uh, remark from your side. Um, I will never forget, uh, many years back I was uh, part of a program where uh, the goal was to globalize uh, social entrepreneurs. Exactly as you said, they would pick some of the most promising social entrepreneurs and try to somehow scale their ventures. And I remember the interaction with one of uh, the participants who was during the day giving all sorts of lectures and talks and discussions. And then uh, at the evening after the fourth beer, he told us, well, guys, you know, in the end, um, what I care about is the people in my village. And he, he worked uh, in political participation for a particular village. So I don't really want to go abroad. I don't want to really go elsewhere because this is what I care about. And I think many social entrepreneurs do have some a local driver that is very much localized um, and if what they are passionate about is very local then I think the first step is to either go for a conscious uh, uh, process of understanding that maybe this program is also problem is also uh, very significant elsewhere or if they realize that this is just not what they're passionate about maybe they should uh, not scale or they should scale in a way that doesn't require them so much mm -hmm. so maybe then an open dissemination scaling approach is much uh, more uh, fitting to what their passion is. On the other hand, you will find social entrepreneurs who are, I don't know, empire builders or who want to see the world or who take just pleasure in growing an organization. For them, maybe the more demanding types of scaling are also uh, much more uh, fit to, to what they are, what they care about and what they can also pull off. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Peter. I'm now at the closing question. We got one more minute uh, for you personally. Uh, what's next for you in this terms of research? What are you most interested in, and what what are your next uh, next steps in this uh, in this in this world of research on on social entrepreneurship? Well, on, on one hand, we, we really want to understand uh, this whole process better. Uh, on the other hand, I also have my second identity that I didn't man uh, mention before uh, with Social Impact Award, which is a program that we are uh, currently scaling on and on. We are currently active in 26 countries and. I hope that we will be able to internationalize into even more countries and supporting social entrepreneurs also there. So the topic will definitely stay with me for the next years. Okay. Peter, thanks a lot. An enlightening discussion as always uh, when, when talking to you. And this closes uh, this fireside uh, talk. Thank you, Peter. Thanks for the attention. Thank you, Michael, for the invitation. And uh, thank you for your team as well. <laughs>